Uh, Ron Shulman, we're here at your new location for the Tiger Shulman School in Manhattan. Uh, talk a little bit about your the organization, the size of it, and you know its reach, number of students. The whole organization? Yeah. Uh, I don't even know the numbers, but we have, I think it's 48 schools now. And um, this is our, we had one in Manhattan, which we closed and we opened two. This is the first one that's open right now. The other one is being built. I guess an average number of students per school, to, um, 48, probably about 250 to 300 students times that many schools, whatever that number comes to. Okay. How many instructors? How many instructors per school? Well, each school is run and owned by the instructor, which we feel is the best way because the most important person in the school is the instructor and if they have ownership they care that much more so they take pride in their classes they're not just instructors that come in and get paid by the hour that is their school and their students are their product so they're there more than the hours they they're supposed to be there it's not an eight hour nine to five job it's their school and it's their pride you, it's a very successful organization, very big, uh, and it's been around how many how many years? Um, since really eighty three, so thirty years. Uh, what's the secret? I mean, what's the secret to your longevity and, and success? Um, just taking it day by day, really. No, not setting real goals for how many schools. Because people always ask that, how many how many schools do you want to open this year? And, how big do you want to get, but that's not really what it's about. It's about having great students that, you know, they evolve into instructors. It just happens because they fall in love with the art, and then they want to open a school. They're qualified. They find the money to put it up to school, or somebody finances them, and then they're in there, and it's their passion. Hey, so. The school... Uh, <laughs> That's the phone. Yeah. The uh, school has has uh, martial arts origins and knockdown karate, right? But it's evolved over the years. Talk about the evolution. I mean, you guys have you guys cater to you know the kids and the, the, the families for self defense instruction, but you also have a, like a great fight team that competes in, in all different kinds of combat sports. Yeah. Back in the day, there was no mixed martial arts. There was just karate, you know. And back then, we also wrestled. Me and my brother both wrestled. We also boxed, but our main thing was the karate, and that's all it was back then. But we always knew that we always we were in a hard style of karate, Kyushin karate. It was known to be a hard style, and there was a lot of kumite, which is fighting. Um, so we knew how important it was to, to do the real thing. So when mixed martial arts came into this country, I mean that was what ninety three. Ninety three. 93 and we saw the jiu-jitsu and all of that we're like wow and you know we have a wrestling background so we loved it and we gravitated towards it we liked it so much but in order to get into it and to you know learn it and then start teaching it in our schools we couldn't keep doing what we were doing we had to cut something out so we did what we felt was more important and what we enjoyed most which is having an art that really works for self-defense. No sense in doing something that you know, you're know you stuck with that you learned over the years, but we found something that was really effective. We saw how effective jiu-jitsu was in combination with, your, um, with striking. So we started training in that and we incorporated it into our schools and we slowly pulled out forms, got us, and we pulled out the weapons, you know, and some people got a little upset, but the people that didn't get upset were our instructors, because they were passionate about martial arts and self-defense, and they loved it also. So we had an easy transition with the instructors. Some students were like, oh, we like the old traditional stuff, few, but overall it was very positive, and we love what we did. You have uh, some very successful MMA fighters that have like competed at all levels. Uh, what's that like? What's what's that experience? You know, creating these fighters that compete there, 
going to these shows, cornering them. I mean, we'll, how does the industry treat you? How do you see it? We'll talk about the experience. I think it's great. I mean, it's it's really great for the individual fighters that we have. More importantly than for us, you know, we just make sure that they're trained well enough where it's safe for them. We don't want to throw them out unless they're ready. We have a really big fight team, so it's not like we're trying to find fights. There's there's not enough um, venues out there for all the fighters that we have. You know, we have probably on some days training on our fight class at our headquarters. You'll have seventy guys. You know, some days less, twenty, thirty. But it's still a pretty big fight team. Um, how does it make me feel? I mean, of course, I'm very proud and proud of the students that come up that fight, and um, they usually do well. You know, make sure that the technique is sharp and they're conditioned really well, and that's it. And they go out there and they do their thing. Yeah, I was actually at a, an event in Queens this weekend, and there were six Tiger Shulman fighters there, and, and five of them won. The last one. Was uh, it was pretty close? It was a pretty close fight. Yeah, I heard. I wasn't there for that, but I heard it was good. Yeah, that was nice. It's nice to have numbers like that. Yeah, you know, doesn't always go that way, but it, we have a pretty successful fight team. So what's what's the goal? I mean, what happens in twenty years? Where are you going to be? Don't know. Don't really have long term goals. You know, just kind of enjoying what we're doing right now. You know, when someone's ready to put up a school like this school right here. There's basically two programs. There's a morning program run by Carlos Brooks, professional kickboxer and MMA fighter. And at night, we got Jimmy Rivera, again, professional fighter also. So this is going to be their school. The other school will be Lyman Good teaching at night and during the day. But for now, we don't really have a set instructor. So that's how, you know, that's our goal is just to put up this school and then that school make sure everything is right and you know Lyman has the help that he needs and they're successful and then the next person that pops up you know I got a whole bunch of people coming up you know younger kids that are going to fight for a while and they'll want to open school so they can make it a career right that's the one good thing about training in Tiger Showman's and fighting for our team is there's something afterwards because a lot of fighters when they're done they don't know what to do you know when they here there is a path so you, you're brought up through the ranks, you fight. When you're done fighting, whatever it is, or if you decide you never want to fight, but you're that good, then you can become an instructor, open a school, and you can pass your knowledge on to other people. How does one become an instructor? You train. <laughs> train with us, and then we know when you're qualified, basically. It's still tight like that. You know, we're still training our guys. You know, we didn't take our eye off the ball yet. You know, we're still there. So we know every single one of the guys. And usually, these fighters are working in the schools. Like if you name any one of our professional fighters, like Lewis Gardner, he runs our whole open school. You know, and before that, he was working in the school as a manager, as an assistant instructor. So they become qualified just through their experience. <clears throat> and then when they're ready, it's usually like, okay, let's find a place. We find a location. And we get them in there. I I know in the past that you guys like you would allow you know some known pro fighters to come train at the fight team. Is that still the case? Yeah, yeah. We get people from K Dojo. We get boxers coming in from um, LA Boxing and Hoboken. We get uh, the other the other uh, Red Fury. We get a lot of the Russian guys to come to us. So it's always great to have them. Uh, Kurt Pellegrino brings his guys down. Sometimes our guys go there. Um, in Long Island, what's his name? Uh, Dennis Bermudez is coach. Uh, I forgot his name. <laughs> Tremble? Tremble. Tremble. Yeah. yeah, he's been down to our place. We've been down to his place. So we try to do that. This way the guys get a feel. You know, it, it, you're always fighting against the same guys in your own gym. You know, you get used to one another. It's nice when you can go against other guys, and you know, everyone's pretty respectful. You know, there's uh, probably a misconception out there that you guys are pretty closed, like a closed society. But that's not the case. If you absolutely not, yeah, people are training everywhere. People are. Yeah, you we don't mind. Coming. We don't mind. Like Carlos went down to to the Jersey Shore for a vacation, and he's like, "You mind if I go to Carpellegrino?" I was like, "No, go enjoy." 
The only time we wouldn't like it is if that gym is closed, they don't let their guys go anywhere, and then we're like, okay, forget them. But if if it's a cool gym and you know, the, inst- the instructor and the coaches are cool, then it's never a problem. We like that. It's a good thing. In fact, tomorrow we're going to Hoboken with about six guys to box. At a boxing gym? Yeah, in Hoboken. Um, I can give you the address later if you want to come down. <laughs> so you got like Julio's. Julio's going to be there. Jimmy's going to train. I got a couple of new amateurs from here. Malik Blake and uh, Isaiah Sanchez doing good. So, uh, as the person who sees all in the organization, sees all the fighters uh, coming up, who should we look out for? I know that Julio ours just won Grand Combat title. Yeah. Up and comers that people don't know about yet? Yeah. Julio Arce, um, Shane Burgos. Those are two that you, you should keep your eye on. Um, and of course, Jimmy. Hopefully, they call him to the UFC soon. He's chopping at the bit. He wants to get in there. Um, who else? Hopefully, Lyman makes a comeback. I think he's itching. He's starting to itch again. You know. Yeah. Well, he's got he's got a school to worry about. Yeah, but I think he still wants to fight, which is fine. You know, because we can always he can do both. You know, most of our instructors they'll train during the day and then they go to work at night and teach. That's what they do. Awesome. All right.